video game studios hide all manner of things in titles they make. I mean, just look at previous Fact Hunt episodes where we've looked at rude images and certain characters that developers left in their titles, either for a bit of fun or just because they couldn't be asked to remove them. However, one thing you wouldn't expect to find though, are video files. Yep, those space hogging pieces of visual media can also be hidden within games, be it for reasons of laziness, mischievousness, or just to be outright bizarre. So this episode, we take a look at this camouflaged footage, these masked motions, and these shrouded shows. As I say... But, hello you. I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five games with hidden videos. Rockstar's popular prostitute perforating series, Grand Theft Auto, is one of the most beloved in all of gaming. One thing that players point to when explaining their enjoyment of this game is its open sandbox nature. You can go out and cause some chaos, go for a nice leisurely drive, partake in a minigame, or just watch some TV. And although the feature of being able to watch TV has been with the series since Grand Theft Auto 4, it was the expansion pack, Episodes from Liberty City, that players first saw the fictional world of Princess Robot Bubblegum. Basically an in-game joke invented by Rockstar to poke fun to every known anime and manga stereotype. Hopefully the footage alone will convey this, because I don't want to describe it any further, as I'm close to the yellow dollar sign territory <laughs> as it is. Anyhow. With the release of Grand Theft Auto V on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, the ability to watch television was back, and a few of the shows from Grand Theft Auto 4 made a return. Although, bizarrely, Princess Robot Bubblegum was not one of them. Which was strange, because when you completed the game, three voice actors are credited for a second Princess Robot Bubblegum episode. Fans desperate for answers began data mining, and after a while, they discovered in the game files that their favourite scantily clad superhero did star in a second episode, but just wasn't accessible in-game. Although some rather dark reasons why Rockstar left it inaccessible are floating around online, they've never given a reason as to why. However, they must have been listening to the internets, as upon the PS4 and Xbox One release, followers of the hopefully legal heroine were finally able to watch the next episode. Rockstar enabled the spoof anime to be seen on the in-game TVs. So weebs everywhere rejoiced as they are now able to watch Rockstar take the mick out of them. Watching greasy, steroid-injecting men pretending to beat each other up is extremely popular the world over. But the Fast and Furious films will never be as popular as WWE Wrestling, and almost as popular as sport are the video games based upon it. Around the turn of the millennium, wrestling was at its apex of popularity, and every console platform needed a decent game based on the spandex superheroes. Sony and Nintendo owners had both been enjoying many great titles based on the then WWF. So when Microsoft launched the Xbox around this time, they knew that they too would need a great game to try and pull in wrestling fans. Unfortunately, Xbox owners received the painfully mediocre WWF Raw in response. This serviceable but ultimately pedestrian wrestling game features most of the popular characters of the era and the sort of modes and options gamers had come to expect from a wrestling game. This includes the create a wrestler function, and this is where the videos hidden in this game come in, as there's a few unused assets that probably were going to be used for wrestlers ring entrances. You have this one, which is titled Fire, which does look like the sort of thing a wrestler would have for their entrance video. This one is called Skater, which... Okay, skateboarding was popular at the time. 
But now he starts moving into the abstract, with this one called Psychedelia, which I guess you could use if you made some sort of acid warrior. The next is called Rockets. That must have been intended for people looking to create a wrestling version of Tim Westwood. The City video gives me the overwhelming urge to create an angry Ross from Friends wrestler. Red Ross! I think THQ had lost all sight of what game they were making when they included this video called Animation. Dude Love wasn't in this game, but had this video called Happy been selectable, you could have made a dollar store version of Mick Foley. Finally, there is this one called C, and outside of recreating the Masters of the Universe character Merman, I can't really see any practical application for this. Nor could THQ, so all of these videos were obscured from the public. Much like the back catalogue of Chris Benoit matches. A game about a man who twats a ball with a stick proved to be extremely lucrative for electronic arts in the noughties. So, yep, we're talking about the Tiger Woods PGA Tour series here, and not that horrific Cyber Tiger golf game. EA slapped Tiger's famous mug all over their PGA Tour series between 1999 and 2013. However, it was the very first game that featured the DUI driver that contained a hidden surprise in the form of a video hidden on the disc, which could be found if you inserted the game into a PC. A file called zzdummy.dat was sitting alongside all the game files, and by using a QuickTime video player to open it, you'd discover that this file was actually an uncensored version of the pilot episode of South Park. For those who know the Colorado cartoon well, this was the Spirit of Christmas episode, where Santa ends up fighting Jesus. Once this was discovered on the disc, all hell broke loose. First, the mass distribution of a cartoon you don't own is obviously quite illegal. Second, Tiger Woods PGA Tour 99 was rated E for everyone. But this hidden South Park episode had all the swearing and bloody violence uncensored. A hundred thousand copies of Tiger Woods PGA Tour 99 for the PlayStation were pressed before EA removed the file, with the House of Hawkins desperately trying to recall all remaining offending discs. In the years that followed, Simon Mills, the lead program on James Bond 007 Nightfire, said that the Tiger Woods event created EA's policy of removing any unused content to make sure nothing extra found its way onto a disc ever again. This policy sure does go a long way to explain the frankly anemic Star Wars Battlefront then, doesn't it? Virus the Video Game was a unique title and a marketing nightmare. Asking gamers to install virus into their computers was like asking vegans to keep Big Macs in their kitchens. Nevertheless, this game was released by publisher Telstar on the PC in 1997 and had the unique selling point of being personalised to your machine. It was a 3D action game that read the folder and file structure of your hard drive and built its levels based on what it found. So, you'd be chasing a virus in a 3D world as it passed through your various program files and window folders. You could even end up in the secret folder you keep buried within Windows that has all those naughty videos inside. You also may be wondering why the video footage here looks like complete arse. Well, that's because the only footage online of it is from a guy who recorded it by pointing a video camera at his monitor. And even if you did try to run this game under a Windows 95 virtual machine, it goes completely nuts because the game speed is locked to your CPU. Anyway, hidden away on the game disc was a trailer for another game that publisher Telstar planned to release, Joe Blow. This is a game where you'd have played as this small monkey fella in an action platform title of sorts. As hindsight will tell you, Joe Blow was cancelled and never saw release despite seemingly being quite far into development and magazines even running previews of the game. 
But looking at this footage, it doesn't look like it would have been very good. In fact, you could say that it blows. <laughs> I'll get my coat. Do you remember Kenji Ino? Everything he made was weird. He made a disturbing FMV Adventure D where a crap voice actor would repeat the name Laura every so often. Then you have the real sound Kaze No Regret, which was just a black screen with audio of a high school drama story. But to be fair, that was designed as a game that could be enjoyed by the blind, as the game even came with instructions written in braille. Obviously, Eno was good friends with fellow lunatic Hideo Kojima, and Kojima's name can even be found as a special thanks in Eno's last major title, D2. D2 being a fully 3D sequel to the FMV title, D. For those of you unaware, D2 was a Sega Dreamcast title where protagonist Laura had survived a plane crash and found herself in a barren snow-covered land that is crawling with monsters. It's a survival horror game that has Eno's trademark weirdness stamped all over it. But originally, D2 was planned to be a completely different game to what was released, and a hidden video contained on the D2 disc shows gamers what could have been. You see, Kenji originally began creating D2 as a totally different game on a totally different system. The Panasonic M2, in fact. What is the M2, I hear you ask? Well, it was the unreleased successor to the 3DO, a system that failed so hard that its sequel couldn't even make it to market. So, of course, that's the console that Eno thought D2 should appear on. Clearly, the M2 never came out, and nor did this version of D2. However, rather than forgetting this ever happened, Kenji included a hidden promo on the Dreamcast release for people to find. It's a shame Kenji left this mortal call in 2013. One can only imagine the sort of insanity he would be blessing gamers with in this modern age. Rest in peace, Kenji Eno, you beautiful madman. Rest in peace. Hello, you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out my Displate collection in the links below. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon. But thanks for watching and I'm missing you already.